Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Women of Color, Money and Legacy, where I talk money matters. I share strategies to empower us to become financially literate in terms of managing our money wisely, building generational wealth, financial stewardship, and creating a lasting legacy. And if you enjoy this video, please share, like, comment, and subscribe. And I want you to stay until the end because I will be sharing my story. That being said, let's jump right into it. Last week, I shared 10 telltale signs of financial instability so that we can begin to set our financial house in order. Now, much of that instability stems from how we think about money. So today, I'm going to explore the money mindset and how we can recondition our minds or condition our mindset and shift from lack and living in the moment to abundance and vision. So what is this money mindset? Quite simply, it is simply our own attitude and beliefs about money. It drives our financial decision-making on a daily basis. Those decisions can either set us up or set us back. The choice is ours. Now, I'd like to ask you, what is your relationship with money? Now, if you view money as just a means to an end, then money has no value to you except to pay your bills and perhaps buy the newest iPhone or Louis Vuitton handbag. We have to condition our mind to view money as a means of exchange and value where we're working for money and money's not working for us. That starts with changing our negative beliefs about money. Now, let me ask you this. Have you envisioned yourself having a debt-free lifestyle where you don't have to pull out a credit card to pay for stuff, where you're living well below your income, where you can purchase your next car or house with cash, own rental property, where you can get to financial freedom to live well now and leave a legacy for future generations? Now, it is quite achievable, but most people don't believe they have what it takes. And that goes back to their relationship with money. They just see it as a means to an end. They formed a negativity toward excess money. So they haven't taken hold of the true value of money for themselves personally. One of the biggest myths that broke people have is that they don't have what it takes to build wealth. They don't have enough money. They don't measure up. The reality is you and I do have what it takes. The only thing that's holding us back from financial success is our self-limiting beliefs. And I'm going to challenge those beliefs today. And let me share this story with you. My father passed away when I was just 10 months old and my mother had to go back to work and raise five children with the oldest being 10. When my father died, my mother came into some money from a settlement or insurance or something. So she built a new house with cash. So we were not destitute in that regard, but as you can imagine, there were challenges as a single working mother, but she did manage. Now in high school, there was a vocational office training program, or VOT as it was called, where students were trained to work in administrative careers, secretaries and administrative assistants. As part of the program, we were assigned apprenticeships with local businesses. We'd attend classes in shorthand and typing in the mornings and then off to our work assignments in the afternoons. I worked in the office of a local factory that manufactured healthcare apparel for doctors and nurses, and I excelled in the program. I was even voted as the VOT student of the year. Now this was my senior year. We lived out in the country where being a school teacher or a secretary was considered a level up. These jobs were few and far between, especially for women of color. Most women were either working in the factory, cleaning hotels and offices, or they were domestic workers, okay? Now, after graduating from high school, I went on to college with plans of majoring in Secretary of Science with a minor in English. Now, as fate would have it, during my freshman year, I met a wonderful gentleman who became one of my two besties for life until he passed away three years ago. His major was in business administration with a minor in finance or economics very intelligent, very studious, and being around him exposed me to a new level of thinking. He had very lofty goals that caused me to reprogram my mindset. Now, nothing wrong with being a secretary, but being around him caused me to have a bigger vision for my life. I changed my major from secretary of science to business administration. I later went on to graduate school, got my MBA in accounting and taxation, worked for one of the two top telecommunications companies in the world, performing tax research and planning, earning six figures, and from there, I took the leap of faith to become a full-time entrepreneur. 
Now, what am I saying? I want you to look at the four people you hang around the most. On average, you are who they are because birds of a feather do flock together. Consider how they act, what they believe, how they talk, what they say, and see how it has affected your life. If you're hanging around people who are unmotivated, you are not going to be motivated. If they're not pursuing anything better, I guarantee the same is true for you. You have to surround yourself with people who understand what you're trying to accomplish because they're trying to accomplish the same thing. Put people around you who want more, people who are driven. They don't have to be people who are physically around you. It can be someone online, say a YouTube influencer or some social media personality or business network. You can't hang around complacent people and have it not affect your mindset. You just can't do it. I'm hoping that for someone listening to me, that this will be a defining moment where you say, wait a minute, draw a line in the sand and envision financial freedom for yourself. Wealth is a state of mind. Condition your mind to begin thinking abundance rather than just enough. Once you change your mind, you can begin to set specific money goals and plot out a strategy for how you're going to get there. You don't have to make a lot of money. You can start just where you are. I want us to challenge ourselves to change our negative beliefs about money. Some people like to misquote the Bible by saying that money is evil, or they'll say, you know, the Bible says that it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than for a camel to get through the eye of a needle, as if to suggest we shouldn't seek after money. But you have to understand the context of the scripture. The Bible doesn't say that money is evil. It says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil which is referring to greed, hoarding, and doing evil deeds to get money. I love that scripture that says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. God thinks generationally, so we need to debunk anything to the contrary of what God desires for us, which is abundance. There is nothing wrong with having money as long as money doesn't have us. Now, I shared 10 telltale signs in last week's video. Today, I want to share seven keys on how to condition your mind for financial freedom. And as I've said before, wealth is a relative term. What wealth means to me might be different from what it means to you. For me, financial freedom means having enough money to control your own time and financial destiny. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are a millionaire or billionaire, okay? So let's talk about this. Key number one is to create a positive relationship with money. And how do you do that? by changing any self-limiting beliefs such as not having what it takes. I'm not smart enough. I'm too old. It's too hard. Or what about this one? I can't afford it. The truth is that you can't not afford it. I have learned that where there is a will, there is a way. And you have to challenge yourself to change those feelings. Make up your mind that you refuse to live in lack or just for the moment. You've got to start thinking about the future and you have to come to that decision. And that's key number one. Key number two, make financial freedom a priority. I'm not talking about greed or obsession over money. Money is a valuable commodity that we all need and we should have a purpose for it. It's true that money can't buy happiness. It will only bring out more of what is already in you. And that might be something that you might have to work on. But money gives you options and it can create opportunities. Having money can determine where you live, where your children attend school, the circles you move in, your retirement and your legacy. And I want you to set money goals and be specific about the amount of money you need. We're talking about making abundance a priority. So that's number two. Key number three is to come up with a money strategy to level up your income. What is your strategy for creating more income to reach your money goals? You will need a plan and a vehicle to help manage your money and make it grow. And next week, I will go into depth about how to level up your income and I'll share three vehicles to get financial freedom. Now, making money can be fun, but you have to have a plan and a vehicle to reach your goals. If necessary, get a qualified person who can go over your strategy with you. The key to mastering your strategy is to do what other people do. I have gained a wealth of knowledge watching and listening to business and money gurus just right here on YouTube. If you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me, there is a link in the description box below. So that's key number three. Key number four is to plan your work and work your plan. Simply put, take action. You need to follow your plan consistently day in and day out. 
And as I said before, you can start with a small amount. You can't wait until you have a ton of money to start investing. You will need to make sacrifices, but it comes down to how bad do you want it. Look for ways that you can trim your budget and put that money towards your financial freedom goals. And one thing I can't stress enough is that you must live below your income. To do that, you're either going to have to cut your expenses or increase your income. And practically speaking, you'll need to do both because at the end of the day, you've got to be consistent. That's key number four. Key number five, master your own strategy. You can listen to me and other experts for guidance, but you have to master your strategy because there is no one size fits all. We are not all at the same stage with the same set of challenges. I'm already debt free. I have a six month emergency plan. I don't have a car note. My primary strategy centers around saving, creating multiple streams of income and compounding interest bearing investments. For the longest time, I was one of those people who was totally ignorant about the stock market, wanted nothing to do with it. It wasn't until my 70 something year old brother encouraged my sister and I to start investing in the stock market. Now, I was skeptical, but I took his advice because he's my brother. I jumped into the stock market and learned as much as I could. Now, I don't consider myself a guru, but I've gotten comfortable investing in the stock market. It's not the boogeyman to me anymore. I'm thinking my brother is sitting his retired self in a rocking chair, sipping tea, only to learn that he is still actively making money from various streams of income. He also has rental properties. And that just goes to show you that it's never too late and you're never too old. My biggest regret about the stock market is that I wish I knew 20 years ago what I know today. But I digress. The point is, it's okay to get advice and guidance, but become your own expert by understanding the nuances of your strategy, such as tax implications of investing or business deductions. Do your own research and due diligence. That's key number five. Key number six, build your foundation and stay the course. Don't get complacent when you achieve a milestone. Let's say you paid off your debt, which is fantastic, and you should be proud but don't be satisfied. Take that money and apply it to your financial goal. If your goal is to create an additional $2,000 a month to invest, keep building once you reach that goal. The key to growing your money and creating a legacy is to continue building upon that foundation. Once you've achieved one goal, don't rest on your laurels, continue to build. That's key number six. And key number seven, don't let setbacks cause you to give up. Disappointments happen sometimes by our own hands, and sometimes things happen that are beyond our control. I've lost money in the stock market. I've gotten greedy doing options trading and took a hit. I didn't stop investing. I kept learning how to navigate my way through crashes, recessions, bull and bear markets. I didn't throw in the towel and say, oh no, this is not for me. If you lose some money, the business fail, or whatever the case may be, keep the faith. Get up, dust yourself off, learn what you need to learn and keep going. Just because you fail at something in the past doesn't make you a failure. You're only a failure if you give up. There you have it. Seven keys to how to condition your mind for financial freedom. And I'm going to deep dive into each of these keys separately in future videos. I think it's important to begin by conditioning our money mindset for abundance. Change your mind and change your money. A healthy mindset is a wealthy mindset. Now, as I prepare to wrap up today, one thing I will encourage you to do is create a financial journey. I've got mine here. You can jot down daily affirmations, create a vision board, write out your to-do list and record my assignments. I will periodically give you an assignment. Your assignment this week is to take each of these seven keys and write down an affirmation and an action step for each one. So that's my assignment for you this week. As I mentioned earlier in this video, next week I'll be sharing on how to level up your income. You've got to have a plan and a vehicle to get you to financial freedom. And we'll deep dive into that next week. That's going to wrap it up for me today. Thank you for staying until the end. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Click that notification bell to receive an alert each time I upload a new video. And until the next time, do take care, my loves, and bye for now.